I'm Cynthia Hogue, director of the Creative Writing Program, and it is my very great pleasure to welcome you tonight. Thank you for coming. Please turn off your cell phones. One story of the birth of modernist poetry a century ago entails a meeting of the American poets Ezra Pound and Hilda Doolittle and her British husband, Richard Arlington, in 1912 in the tea room of the British Museum. Ezra pronounced Hilda's verse, poetry with a capital P, appended the abbreviation by which she would forever be known, HD, Imagist, and sent the poems off to Poetry Magazine and launched the Imagist movement. I like to imagine the three founders of the creative writing program, Alberto Rios, Norman Duby, and Carla Elling, sitting in this library's cafe right over there and generating a vision of what 30 years later we are celebrating tonight and this semester. Writers are the scientists of the imagination, Tito said. The poem's attentiveness to world and word is the laboratory of the soul, said Norman. If we build it, they will come, said Carla. <laughs> well, of course, the story's apocryphal. I mean, we are writers, right? But it took vision, communal effort, guides, allies, students, and supporters, many of whom are in this room, to build, and a few heartfelt thanks are in order. To Dr. Jim O'Donnell, director of ASU's Libraries for your vision for the library system and the creative writing program's part in it, as well as for the warm invitation to poets Alberto Rios, Janine Savard, and Sally Ball to read tonight. Thank you for your openness to sponsoring this event, which included power washing this moat to make this beautiful space available. Creative space is what we have here, and it's a space of community. To Jenny DuVernay and Joe Bunker, thank you for your tireless help in all things English department in the library. And thank you to Amy Watson for your beautiful designs of all the graphic art, including the bookmarks back on the page. That we have had not only George Justice's and Mark Lucier's blessings, but their crucial support has made all the difference. And to the artists who envisioned and made this exhibit, Carla Elling, who made the paper and letter pressed all broadsides, and that is only the beginning of what she did. To Rebecca Ross for going back into her program archives and excavating her exquisite photographs. To the creative writing interns, there's too many of you for me to name you all, but you fundamentally helped make this evening possible. And to the exhibition volunteers, Oscar and Ted McNally tonight, and Jim Elling tonight, and when the show was set up, you guys are the best. To Alberto Rios, inaugural Arizona Poet Laureate, Regents Professor, and generous-hearted citizen artist, Thank you for being our guardian angel and visionary. And finally, to Jenny Irish, without whom nothing possible. Our deep gratitude. There she is back there hiding behind a student. If I took the time to tell you the miracles that Jenny has wrought, and she has only been on the job about a month, I would take all the time tonight, so let a simple thank you suffice. I kept asking Jenny through this whole process, Jenny, are you walking on water yet? So thanks to you all, 
And now I'd like to ask Dr. Jim O'Donnell to say a few words. Thank you. Wow, look how many of you are here. This is a really good place to stand right now. So I've been here since February. Um, I came here with a strong charge from President Crow to think about how we renew the libraries of Arizona State University, to build a new American university library that's congruent in ambition, uh, in daring, uh, and in spirit of inclusiveness to the new American university in which we live and work. Uh, there's going to be a lot happening over the next several years to renew these libraries. Uh, most visible will be, we hope, soon, uh, the full renovation of Hayden Library, uh, top to bottom, one side to the other. And that's really, really important. But when I get old and look back and tell a story of what I'm sure will be a great triumph for us in the years to come, I think I'm going to let myself say that the true renewal of the university libraries begins tonight um, with this event that brings together old friends and colleagues in an old space that none of us have ever been together in before. Um, when we're breaking up, some of you look like you might have been here a little longer than me. I'd be glad if there are any memories here of events in the moat at Hayden Library. We can't find any such memories yet. Occasional skulking, and right now, the last year or so, it's been the university's unofficial illegal smoking zone <laughs> because it's a place to hide and the smoking enforcement guys know how to come down here. We discovered the problem when the air intakes started picking up secondhand smoke for our, um, for our staff. Um, there are a lot of ways in which we will change the space, but as beautiful as we can make it, as glorious as we can make it, it will only be space worth having if gatherings like this with people like you, I'll dare to say people like us, uh, come here and bring it alive and animate it. I say, we'll think of the creative writing program as our first partner, we'll date this, uh, this night as a, a first for us in reanimating this, this community. We hope to see and welcome and invite this program back many times in years to come uh, and build better friendships, better collegiality, uh, and hear some better chosen words than the ones that I can produce. Thank you all again, Cynthia, thank you. So I hope you will indulge me for one more moment and then I will shut up and sit down. Um, I'm going to put my hat on as the Marshall Chair in Poetry for a moment and honor the donors briefly. I had the good luck to get to know Jonathan and Maxine well, albeit in their last decade. And this summer, it was to my sorrow that I read of Maxine's death while I was out of town. She is sorely missed. She was, and they were, great-hearted people good friends of ASU and of the Department of English's creative writing program. They were generous supporters of the arts and more broadly of beauty and justice. Phoenix enjoys the Marshall Butterfly Pavilion each spring thanks to them. There is a room devoted to the Marshall gift at the Phoenix Art Museum. And next week, best-selling author Jane Smiley will deliver the Marshall Lecture. I learned of Maxine's deep humanity and kindness and humor when I arrived here 13 years ago and the Marshalls invited my husband and me to their home in Paradise Valley. Yikes, what to wear. I decided on a business casual silk slacks, my only one, but the hem was falling and I hate to sew, or maybe I hadn't unpacked the sewing kit yet, or charitably, maybe I didn't have time to sew it. So I pinned it up with safety pins. I thought were well hidden, and off we went. Of course, I forgot myself and sat with my leg out, and Maxine looked down, saw the pins, and exclaimed, Oh, is that a new fashion from the East Coast? <laughs> Speechless, I looked with horror. And then she turned to Jonathan and said, I would do something like that, wouldn't I, darling? And then she turned to me and she said, 
We're going to be great friends, and we were. I invite you to go to the concourse stairs and find the Marshall exhibit, the little case, with wonderful photographs of, from the ASU Foundation archives, and a gorgeous bookmark designed by Amy Watson with my tribute poem and a few highlights of their lives. We honor the soul of graciousness that they were and that lives on. And now it is time, and it is time, and there will be time for the readings. First, Dustin Pearson will introduce Sally Ball, and then Jenny Irish will introduce Janine Savard, and then Ernesto Abaitia will introduce Alberto Rios. Please join me in welcoming them.